very good afternoon and a hearty welcome to all those who've joined us for today's event. My yeah. name is Koshal Mitha. Uh, I studied Dean's Academy ECC Bangalore in grade 12, and I'll be moderating today's session presented by EduTV. Joining us today on our panel for a brief and very insightful conversation, uh, we have our very esteemed guests. Uh, first, we have Mr. Ajay Singh, the esteemed headmaster at Punjab Public School, Nabha. Having been a teacher since 2003, Sir has worked with various prestigious institutions with decades of experience in, edu in educational management and has held various executive positions in these schools. With a master's in psychology from Banaras Indian University, Sir is also a gold medalist and is an esteemed recipient of the National School Award 2021 for his commendable contribution towards the upliftment of the education system. Would honor to have you here, sir. Thank you so much. You have really made my day, Valentine's Day today. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I could, sir. All right. We also have with us a very special guest. We have Ms. Pakti Shah, who has a decade of experience, over a decade rather, in marketing and with India's leading education companies and has worked with some of India's top Indian and international companies to formulate their outreach and marketing strategies. Uh, Ma'am has a bachelor's in psychology from Ferguson College, uh, Pune, and a master's in international journalism from the University of Westminster, UK. She also has 14 years of experience in the media and education industry. Uh, she's currently a part of the Korea University faculty. Welcome, ma'am, and we're very grateful to have you here. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, just a small note. I was asked to mention that we'll have a 20 minute session and we're really looking forward to seeing you guys interact. I personally too, because it sounds really exciting and new. So without further ado, I think we let you guys get started. Thank you so much, Kushal, uh, for that very uh, warm and uh, welcoming introduction. And, uh, you know, when Pranav spoke to me about this discussion, I was really excited because, um, Mr. Singh, I'm sure you know that, you know, all the panels we're usually on, there is 45 minutes and about eight people who need to share their views. So I am thrilled that here we have 20 whole minutes uh -huh. to listen to your views, which is probably more productive. And we can hopefully have some takeaways from this as well. Um, and, you know, when I was thinking of what should be the overarching theme of our conversation, because there's a lot of conversation about NEP and career choices, one of the issues that is very close to my heart and which is what I wanted to pick your brains on for today was the collaboration and the relationship between schools and universities in India, very specifically. Um, as the headmaster of PPS Nava, and it has such a rich legacy, um, your students are studying all over the world, right? And I'm sure that you and your faculty get approached left, right, and center from universities on, you know, talking to your students, doing marketing presentations. But there's got to be something more to this relationship, don't you think? So the first question that, you know, I'd like to sort of, uh, you know, pose to you is, A, do you think there's scope for more between universities and schools? And B, if yes, what do you think that can be? That's, that's actually a very, very relevant question which has not been discussed. Or if discussed, has not been taken up in the right spirit because if we look at the growth of uh, industry, right from industry 1.0 to now looking at industry 5.0 basically, and the education sector from education 1.0 to education 4.0, gradually the disconnect has happened. Why I say this is because earlier the whole process was to churn out those people who could just fit in for the jobs which are more kind of uh, clerical in nature and not that uh, exploratory kinds what we're looking at. So why this is more relevant is again, because number one, when students look up to a university, they need to start in the school. You know, uh, I don't think Tendulkar would have directly played as a 22-year-old had he not started as a 13-year-old. So taking this you know, connect between the local matches and then becoming a youngster at the age of 16 is what I want, the connect between the school and the university. Now, that can only happen as a nation when we start investing in R&D. Yeah. That's how the connect has to come in. And if you look at today's R&D, unfortunately, in India, the sciences have taken a backseat in the sense 
we are not investing both at the university level and the school level though obviously it has become a sham i as a headmaster have no qualms and rather i am dejected when i say this that what practicals we are doing inside the laboratories at the moment in 12th is not great rather i would be more happy if we can bring in problems like let's say somebody who is in delhi can go to the yamuna river pick up the river water and do a research on that as to what is prevalent what is the source and find a solution for that i would not mind them coming up with a wrong result but for me they have actually done something which is relevant and connected to life so this is what the industry and the school connect has to be in look at financial literacy hamara bachcha school ka who is in grade 11th or 12th doesn't know what is financial literacy whereas for me the compounding and start when the child is in class 9th and 10th they need to learn this nuances of financial literacy because economics will be there for you know as as a connect between school and college then comes your connect between uh, let's say what you are doing inside in terms of english or language and now if you connected with netflix or any of the channels which are in huge demand of students who can write narratives so are we really dishing out narrative writing in the classroom or are we stick, stuck in that mode of teaching english as english that's where it is right why can't we take our students to a site where the university students can come in the school students can come in and together we can have a session let's say near uh, harappa civilization site or uh, not going far kurukshetra there is a, a great uh, you know kind of a, a place where people can connect as to this was life so for me it is really important at this juncture to prepare students for tomorrow and it can only start when we take up the industry and the school connect very seriously and everybody has to chip in absolutely i mean you know and i think there is no greater way to foster creativity than through collaboration and uh, it is you know the fact is that we live in a country where schools are many schools are hampered for resources we're not just talking about schools in tier 1 cities and you know schools that are ib cambridge that have lakhs and lakhs of fees but we're talking about the entire ecosystem and the fact is that universities instead of being looked at as destinations can be looked at as knowledge ecosystems because you have stakeholders like faculty global faculty uh, you have students who are extremely prolific and dynamic who can also mentor students in uh, the k12 space right so you have a multitude of um, you know talent and skill in the university space to make a difference in schools without schools having to pay money and that is i think very critical so when we talk about say for example two of the critical areas sir um you know which i've spoken to a lot of principals about this and i have without exception had extreme excitement on every response where i've said okay tell me which are the top two areas in which you would like to collaborate right so for example if a university would ask you there are tell us two areas in which you need help and we will do what we can to support you in that what would you think are the two greatest areas where schools currently need support two different uh, two areas where i would right now focus is in number one the scientific temper right right where it is more about r and d suited for indian conditions mm. right not aping the west we need more so why can't our students actually design more uh, kind of an aerodynamic rickshaw let's say let them think about it let them come up with this kind of things why can't they design some agricultural implements which is more favorable for so you know those kind of things so experiential academic projects right. essentially why can't yeah why can't I, i mean i know one case where a student of mine now he is collecting all those souls having a connect with the industry and he is bringing out eco friendly soul based slippers recycling it right so we need to do that the second area would be because the future is coming in heavily without looking at you know science or accounting or whatever is how to handle data yeah so data handling will be there whether you take up history whether you take up uh, sociology whether you take up economics whether you take up maths or whether you take up statistics we need to know how to handle data and for that i believe every child should be exposed to coding as such so this coding has to work downwards from the people who are the expert in the industries they 
think of school as a school only. They don't think of the school as a hub for futuristic leaders. So yeah. this has to be brought in. Two areas which I would rather, I mean, really look up is the scientific temper, where we need a lot of innovations. Innovation is not a word. We need to really, really come up with innovations, right? Because this, uh, what I'm right now looking at and studying and reading a lot is linear economy vis-a-vis -vis circular economy. So, you know, these are two really, I mean, India has promised emissions and all the things, courtesy Prime Minister Modi, but to deliver it, I think everybody needs to understand the concept of circular economy, right? So these are the areas which I would really like to focus on. So Mr. Singh, you know, India is a country which is diverse in every sense of the word, including its education system. Um, we all know the diversity that there is in schools, uh, but even in universities, there is a tremendous diversity, especially in the last decade or so. So you have your traditional public universities and colleges. And now in the last decade, you're seeing a spate of uh, liberal arts universities, you're seeing a spate of private universities that are adapting to a very new way of teaching and learning, right? There's tremendous research going on. There's a lot of infrastructure. Um, now, when it comes to public universities, so private universities are relatively easier uh, to reach out to and collaborate with, especially in areas of skill development and professional development for teachers as well as for students and collaborating on uh, you know, topics like building a scientific temper, doing academic collaborations. But when it comes to our public universities, it is extremely difficult to approach them, let alone collaborate. I am yet to see a successful example of a public university collaborating with a school in India or a group of schools in India. What would be your message um, to say a Dr. Rao is the director of IIT, right? Um, and I know his heart lies in these collaborations. I've interacted with him many years ago on this topic, but nothing has really come of it. So what would be your message to your IITs and your NITs and your BITs? What would you say to them? See, I have an immense, lot of respect to IITs. But again, my question is, that we haven't invested in R&D again. Otherwise, why would there be a technocracy deficiency in India where all these good brains, they take the degree, which is really sought after and then move on, right? Most of the technocrats, generally I've seen becoming more of managers or bureaucrats, right? So where is that element of technical ex excellence which is being groomed at IITs? So IIT has to invest again. There are some which are really doing good, right? Like there is this one IIT, I'm forgetting the name, which actually has come up with uh, uh, linking it with history of the Indus Valley and they're trying to do something enthusiastic. I'm forgetting which IIT, but they're doing it, right? Now there is an IIT Madras from where the scholars have made this open door kind of uh, assessment for students in the school. So they're mm -hmm. dishing out something using IIT expertise. This is what is the connect which we need to have. I would be more happy if IITs have some often open days where they yeah. throw up in the labs, invite students across, have sessions with them. I mean, I would be more than happy to take my students there and stay two, three days, right? And get that feel of what happens in IITs. Maybe a classroom. They may not understand. Let it be. But at least let them understand what happens, what transpires. Same goes for medical fraternity, right? Medicine karna hai karna hai, but why? Because India is one country which I believe you are exposed to working on a dead body before you actually become a doctor. Other, I mean, apart from the other Western countries, you're not. But that's the element of uh, advantage what India has, right? So I would suggest IITs, I would suggest IIMs to work with the schools where they look up and engage the schools to their community of research-driven, research-oriented technocrats who are budding, who are heard going up. So this is where they need to really open, throw the doors open to the schools, I believe. I mean, I believe you know, uh, that's such an excellent um, suggestion, Mr. Singh, because honestly, a large part of our country's problem of mindless, uh, following that mindless approach of taking up engineering or medical without any thought um, 
is, is going to be resolved to a large extent if more and more students actually interact with IITNs, with faculty, and understand what it takes to get through that um, that that four year period, right? It sounds so glamorous that you want to get into an IIT, but we know that you know cracking it is one battle, and then getting through it is another battle. And hopefully, our country will have less um, dissatisfied uh, individuals and adults uh, who just simply don't like what they do, you know, and will hopefully pick careers that they're really meant for uh, through this. Um, I'm just going to quickly check with our hosts on how much more time do we have because this conversation yeah. I can go on. So I just want to quickly uh, take a check over here and see how much more time we have. Yeah, I think we can take up one more question, perhaps. Okay, two great. to three more minutes. Perfect. So, um, Mr. Singh, uh, my last question is, of course, we've talked about the public universities. And one of the things that we can try to do is, of course, uh, galvanize the entire university fraternity right where we are coming together to say that schools are not just feeders for students it's not just the output it's the quality of output and universities need to be involved in uh, you know maintaining and building that quality and not simply dictate to schools that oh we need better students or whatever right um in terms of public, uh, private universities, especially the liberal arts universities that have come up, and you know I represent one, I represent Korea, uh, we are a liberal arts university, um, there are many areas of collaboration that are possible. So my question to you is, A, uh, do you think there is an understanding, first of all, of liberal arts that is enough in the country at this point? Uh, or do you think we're still at, in very early days, let alone collaborations? In the present context, if you look at it, the liberal arts is not really understood. Yeah, they believe it's still arts. You know, you know, Indian. You need to understand the Indian psyche. Oh, it's arts. Arts means relegated to the background. If it's not nothing to do with sciences, or maybe the second one accounts. Liberal arts actually is liberating kind of an educational curriculum where you have the choice to study what you want to study. It's nothing to do with the terminological arts, right? So. If I have a you know, freedom to pick up maybe physics, along with it, why can't I do something in music? And the two are connected, let me tell you. I mean, the students also know it, the two are deeply connected. Because if you look at physics, motion, harmonics, and you look at music, what a beautiful connect you have. Similarly, if you look at uh, a lot of things related with mathematics and economics, again, the two are not something to do with sciences only. Now, they are two different kind of uh, streams, if you look at it. So that's where NEP, since you had raised it, I'm very hopeful in the way it has come up, but I'm still skeptical in the delivery of that hope. So I hope they, on the ground level, whatever has been written in that beautifully written document comes up the way we are expecting it to. So this would shape up and liberal arts has to be actually, you know, spread out. Yeah. And the public universities have to take it up because they are still in that stream mode. They need to come out of it as soon as possible. So Ashokas, the Kriyas, and all these things are coming up. I believe I have more hope in them at the moment in doing something new and different rather than the public university. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, the reality is that Ashokas and Kriyas are, you know, uh, I mean, our intakes are so limited um, that the amount of impact that we are able to have is good, but it's very limited in terms of numbers. And that's where the public universities really need to come in because they are the ones who can open their doors to many more students. And I'm very encouraged because I know that a lot of IITs are now coming up with liberal arts um, courses. Uh, and even I am Bangalore is coming up with one. So I'm really encouraged because they will lead the way. And the minute an IIT offers something, then it's it's godsend. So suddenly, we are, you know, just the way pandemic normalized Zoom, IITs are going to normalize liberal arts. And that's unfortunately the reality of our country. Um, but, you know, last, uh, if you were to leave the entire university fraternity, and I'm sure a lot of people will watch this. Um, if you were to leave one message for all of us, what is it that you would not uh, what is it that you would want us to do less of? And what is it that you would want us to do more of with schools? 
there is two words only which come to my mind immediately when you have raised this question less of content more of questions at any level and that will sort sort out a lot of issues we are bogged with content we are not bogged with the quality of what we are dishing out so content less discussions more and the quality of questioning has to be of the highest level right so socratic discussion leads the way i think that's a you know that's a very nuanced uh, message that you've given mr singh it can be interpreted in so many ways and there are two things there one is of course the pedagogy where content less engagement more and also when we come to your schools right instead of just vomiting marketing content you know uh, we should engage with students and have a conversation with them so we understand what they want more than what we offer right so i think that's a very strong message for all of us to take away mr singh thank you so much for joining us today thank you for your time um and if i would love for you to say if you have something to say before we end this and hand it over back to pranav um it's always lovely to talk about education because that's i think the backbone of any society so the more educated we are doesn't decide that more knowledgeable we are right so it's all about what we do as humans when we decide to connect knowledge with everything around us and not we as us exclusive owners of this planet to destroy the planet so let us take the responsibility of being a part of the whole to connect with the whole to make the world a better place thank you mr singh thank you so much i really enjoyed our brief and very i think effective conversation i think maybe we should have more of such formats uh, thank you so much <laughs> don't you think so i mean the, all the panels that we do we yeah, barely have time to speak absolutely i don't know uh, the youngsters will decide how good or fruitful it was yeah so their <laughs> feedback for me is more crucial if whatever we spoke is it relevant to them does it sound good because they are our judges i mean we are not judges yeah mr over please. to you kushal <laughs> yes over to you kushal who is the judge be the judge and executioner <laughs> that's a lot of pressure sir in that but no no i uh, i heard the way you went about talking about education in depth and i think uh, that the practicality of it and finding that connect like uh, i think ma'am and sir both said between the college level and the school level it, it really does matter because is as a 12th grader i think i myself would definitely want to feel like it's just because this is the end of a part of my education does not mean that this was just an end goal to go to university and finding that connect especially with liberal arts as well is something i was also really looking forward to so a lot to learn there so uh, i i really want to thank uh, you bhakti ma'am and you are just because i definitely wanted to hear more about that conversation so yeah um, thank you so much for that thank you kushal thank you so much for bearing with us thank and bearing us out and listening to us my and pleasure god bless you for all your future endeavors right thank you sir thank you thank you bhakti and thank you tanya congratulations now you thank have you, thank you sir you started a new journey so hearty congratulations thank you thank you so much keep watching edu tv well i am very grateful to edu tv keep watching edu tv keep watching edu tv shiksha ke chhetra ki cheezon ko janne ke liye edu tv dekhte rahiye i enjoyed being on edu tv and keep watching edu tv keep watching edu tv edu tv is a very important partner in this journey i would like to express my gratitude to pranav i'm really grateful to the news and edu tv keep watching 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 edu tv i encourage you to watch edu tv keep watching edu tv keep watching edu tv keep watching edu tv keep watching edu tv i officially acknowledge and thank edu tv thank you uh, thank edu tv edu tv is doing great service edu tv is doing a fantastic job i'd like to thank edu tv i would like to congratulate the edu tv i like to thank edu tv edu tv is doing a wonderful job thank you thank you edu tv just want to thank edu tv i would like to wish all the best of edu tv all the best edu tv edu tv has taken a good initiative thank, thank you edu tv we would like to thank edu tv my name is amara yusuf and i'm a student of class 11 from delhi public school bangalore east i today on behalf of edu tv will be conducting this interview session my name is tanya bhatta mishra 
I study in class 12 in Max Sport School, Dwarka, New Delhi. And I will be moderating the first session of the day in this program by EduTV, It's a Matter of Principles. <laughs> Thank you.